Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be making a start, at the very least, on my review of The Lost King of Oz by Ruth Plumley Thompson. So this is, oh, book number 19 in the Wizard of Oz series. Plumley Thompson kind of continued writing it after L. Frank Baum's death. As always, I'm going to read you the blurb, but then I'm going to go through and check out some of my tabs before I share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. I should also point out, this is technically a buddy read with Joel Swagman, although by this point we're both just reading this sort of series at our own pace. Uh, and that is all good. There's not, not wrong with that. Uh, so yeah, let's go to the blurb. So, Dane reads. The Lost King of Oz, in which Mombi, perhaps the wickedest witch in Oz history, sets out to find the legendary Lost King of Oz, whom she enchanted many years before. Paducah the Goose and Snip, a lively Jillikin boy, assist her, while Dorothy wishes her way to California and returns to Oz with a motion picture stunt dummy costumed as a king. Snip is thrown down a well by Mombi, but rescues the tailor with magic ears from the underground city of Blankenburg. Kabumpo the elegant elephant carries the entire party to Emerald City, but a magic feather has lured Ozma, the wizard, and the other Oz celebrities to the deserted kingdom of Morrow. Will the lost king be found and will he reclaim the throne of Oz from Ozma? So that there is pretty much all of the plot of this book. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'll go through and check out some of my tab. So Mombi's lost her magic um, and we get stir as she could, nothing ever came of it for Mombi had forgotten every witch word she had ever known. She knew a good many other words however and said very nearly all of them when her magic failed to work, flinging a stick into the air and hopping up and down with rage and disappointment. I have a good idea what some of those magic words might be. And the goose is super unhappy. He goes, must I continue forever to lead this simple life? Must I associate with ducks and farmers to the end of my days? Maybe it's a foie gras goose. They, they get it pretty bad. And so Paducah the goose uh, gets asked what they miss the most. And they say, my pockets. What is a man without his pockets? No place to put his hands or his bills. Clapping his wing to his side, Paducah looked tragically at Snip, and Snip, patting his own bulging pockets, pockets full of cake, crumbs, marbles, pencil stubs and string, nodded sympathetically. And not only that, continued the goose in a grieved voice, I waken at such ridiculous hours. Ha ho, I find myself falling asleep. Paducah paused here for a simply tremendous yawn. Right after supper, ho hum, finished the goose apologetically. Then, tucking his head under his wing and drawing up on one leg, he fell fast asleep before Snip could ask him another question. And obviously because this is Oz, uh, the goose eventually gets turned back into a human being, but the human being hasn't forgotten being a goose, so he still ends up falling asleep like that. We get lavender spelled L-A-V-E-N-D-A-R, which isn't how you spell lavender. And I'm, as far as I know, has never been how you spell lavender. I don't think it's just like an old fashioned thing. We get the Oz, uh, Oz has enjoyed under the littlest princess in history, an era of great peace and prosperity. Um, because there's talk about the king coming back and taking Ozma's place. And I think it'd be a good idea because Ozma is a terrible ruler. Uh, Paducah the Goose has this great line, don't sass me woman or I'll not help you a mite. Oh, and the scarecrow ejaculates. We get, me the king, ejaculated the scarecrow, falling back against a pillar. And we all know how much I enjoy a good literary ejaculation. So yes, anyway, The Lost King of Oz by Ruth Plumley Thompson. I didn't have a huge amount tabbed out. I don't have a huge amount to say about it, to be honest. It was just a pretty good book. Uh, it was very Oz. It has all the right amounts of like uh, surrealism and all of that stuff. Some great little one-liners, some good humor. Um, obviously a lot of cliches. But then I think the Oz books kind of invented a lot of the cliches that we see today and then like kind of leaned into them, you know. Um, but overall, The Lost King of Oz by Ruth Plumley Thompson, it was probably like a strong 3.5 out of 5. Um, it was good enough that I still don't plan to stop reading the series anytime soon. So onwards to book number 20. So there we have it, that's what I made of The Lost King of Oz by Ruth Plumley Thompson. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read this book and if so, what you thought of it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.